Good morning, good morning, good morning, Crossword. Good morning, Crossword family. It's good to see everyone. It's good to be here. We just want to give God some praise on today. We just want to give him glory on today. We just want to worship him on today because he is faithful. He's loving. He's kind. He's everything that we stand in need of. All we have to do is call on him and wait on him. And everything we need is right there. So we just want to just acknowledge him today in everything that we do, everywhere that we go. We want to let people see the God in us, the God we serve. We want to show our reason for our faith. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you and we praise you this day, Lord God. We praise you, Lord God, because you're everything we need. You're Alpha and you're Omega. You're beginning and you're the end. You're the first and the last. And Lord God, there is no one like you. No one. So we just want to give you praise on today. We want to thank you on today. We want to worship you. We want you to know, Lord God, that we love you because we know that you first loved us. And if you hadn't loved us, Lord God, where would we be? Where would we be? So we thank you and we praise you. We ask, Lord God, that you bless the musicians. Bless our singers, Lord God. Bless them in every area of their lives. Touch them from the top of their head to the balls of their feet. Meet every need in their lives, Lord God. Don't let them go or need for anything. And Lord, I pray for each and every person here on today, Lord God, that you would meet them right where they are, that you would bless them individually and collectively, Lord God, that you would open up the doors of heaven and pour out a blessing that they won't even have room enough to receive. And Father God, I ask that you bless the word on today. Bless Bishop as he preached, Lord God, your word. Teach your word, Lord God. Speak to him, Lord God, as he speaks to us. Open him up, Lord God, so that we can open up. Give us a heart to receive, ears to hear. Lord, just do what only you can do in our lives on today, Lord God. Answer prayers. Heal, deliver, set free. Do what only you can do. And Father God, we be so careful to give you all the praise, to give you all the honor and to give you all the glory. <laughs> and it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone who is in this room, if you believe and you agree, say amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, Crossword. Good morning, family. Anybody know that we serve a mighty God? You know we serve a mighty God who can do all things. He is our champion. We're going to watch a football game today, but we know that God is the ultimate champion of all. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all the glory, and we love him. We're going to worship him for who he is, not just for what he does for us, but for who he is. We worship. Oh, lift your worship in the room. Lift your worship, lift your worship, oh, 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 we love you, oh God, yes, you're worthy to be praised, you're worthy to be praised, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same Jesus, we bless your name, we bless your name, we bless your name. We bless your name. It's real easy. I love you, oh Lord, my strength. I love you, oh Lord, my strength. I love you. Can you sing it out with me? Oh Lord, my strength. I love you. Talk to your father. Oh, Lord, my strength. I love you. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, my strength. 
Yeah. Talk to your father. Oh Lord, I love you. Yes, I do. Oh Lord, Jesus, how we love you. Oh Lord, Lord, I love you. I love you. Oh Lord, I love you, Jesus. Because you're worthy. I will call, I will call on the name of the Lord. Who is worthy? Who is worthy to be praised? Say, I will call, I, I will call, call on the name of the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised? Who is worthy to be praised? I will call, I will call on the name of the Lord. No matter 
matter how it feels in the midst of it all in the midst of the trial in the midst of tribulation i will call i will call worthy. Yes, God, you are this worthy. Yes, God, you are this worthy. Do you bless your holy name, Jesus? I didn't feel like it, but I will call. I will call on the name of the Lord. He's worthy. I will call on the name of the Lord. He's worthy. I will call on the name of the Lord. Broke me up. Head on my head, roof over my head, shoes on my feet, trials, tribulations, family not acting right, children not acting right, while I'm on the freeway, I will call. good to me y'all he's so good to me he's so good to me he's perfect he's perfect in all of his ways not just some of his ways listen I don't know what you're facing today but it's not too much for God I don't know what kind of situation you may be facing but nothing is too hard Nothing is too hard for God. Nothing is too hard for God. He's perfect in all his ways. So no matter what comes your way, he's still worthy of praise. No matter what it looks like, God is still worthy of praise. He responds to his word. But I believe that he also responds to our worship. And this is how we respond through our worship. For his faithfulness, for his gentleness. You are perfect, tried and pure. You are healer, you are the cure. Redeemer of the lost and old. You're the sovereign Lord of all. Your creator of earth and stone. <laughs> You're the maker 
of flesh and bone. You're Jehovah, all powerful. You're a freedom worth fighting for. So come what may, you're worthy of glory. Come what may, you're worthy of praise. All we are is heaven's reflection. We'll bless your name. We'll bless your name. We'll bless your name. You are perfect, tried and pure. You are healer. You are the cure. Redeemer of the lost and cold. You're the sovereign Lord of all. You're creator of earth and stone. Yeah. You're the maker of flesh and bone. You're Jehovah, all powerful. Yeah, you're a freedom worth fighting for. Let's say it out. So come what may, come what may, you're worthy. Come what may, come what may, you're worthy. All we are, all we are is courage. We'll bless, we'll bless you. No matter what it looks like. Come, we'll bless you. We give it all to you. Say hallelujah. 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 What you gave us. What you gave us. We give it all to you. Yeah, let's say it again. Say hallelujah. Highest praise, hallelujah. 
We give it all. We give it all. We give it all. We give it all. Hallelujah. What you gave us. Yeah. We give it back. Hallelujah. 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 What you gave us. What you gave us. We give it all to you. Give it all to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What you gave us. We give it all to you. 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 Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We give it all to you. Hey, we give it all. You get the glory, Jesus. You get the praise, God. Yes. We give it all. We give it all to you. Hallelujah. 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 Hello, Crossword, and happy Super Bowl Sunday. My name is Leslie, and these are your announcements. Parents, have you registered your youth for the upcoming Chosen Youth Conference? As parental figures, it is important we give our children every opportunity for spiritual growth and development. This Friday and Saturday, February 17th and 18th, the Chosen Youth Ministry is hosting the first TC Youth Conference. Registration is only $15 and includes conference materials, meals, fun activities, and dynamic workshops on topics like dating, mental health, college and career readiness, how to study the Bible, how to pray, and more. All youth, grades 6 to 12, are encouraged to attend. It's not too late. Register today at the link on the screen and invite a friend. Each Saturday in February from 10 a.m. to noon, the Spiritually Anointed Praise Dance Ministry hosts rehearsals in the Haven Sanctuary. If your daughter, ages 7 to 18, has signed up or is interested in praise dance, feel free to join us. We are preparing for Resurrection Sunday, Easter worship service, to give God the glory for all he has done. The next Bread of Life Outreach Day will be Saturday, February 25th, from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. No pre-registration required. Just show up and be blessed. To those who do not need these services, there is always a need for donations of shelf-stable, low-sodium foods, and personal care items like toothpaste, body wash, lotion, deodorant, and mouthwash. Monetary donations to the outreach ministry are also welcome. Thank you in advance for your willing heart to help others. Ladies, our annual retreat is right around the corner, March 10th through the 12th at the beautiful Cape Ray Hilton in Carlsbad. Do not miss this opportunity to get away for a much-needed self-care and fellowship with other women who love God. Cost is only $100 per woman and includes conference materials, some meals, and activities. Once you register for the retreat, you'll receive a link to book your hotel room and take advantage of the discounted room rate of $235 per night. Register today at the link on the screen. The last day to book your hotel is February 14th. Don't wait, register today. And to those of you who have already registered, this is one of the best decisions you have made for yourself. Calling all men. Do you want to experience the fullness of God, but not sure where to begin? Is fellowship with other men who love God something you need in your life? If you've answered yes to either of these questions, join the Iron Men's Ministry, a life group where we agree that iron sharpens iron. Our sessions are every Saturday at 8 a.m. at the main campus in the core building. There is no better time than now to get plugged in and strengthen your faith. 
to all graduating high school seniors, tickets for our 8th annual scholarship luncheon are only $75 each. This will be a great time to fellowship with a delicious meal, a special word of encouragement, and gifts to honor our graduating high school students. Whether entering college, the military, or trade school, let's make this event one to remember for our scholars. If you are a graduating high school senior or the parent of one, remember to pick up an application for this year's scholarship awards in the church lobby. We believe that it takes a village to raise our children, and we are that village. Hey church, let's get excited. A new and refreshed crossword choir will become part of our monthly worship service. If you have the gift of song, this is your time to share your gift in corporate worship. Musicians are asked to be at this meeting also. So join us this Thursday, February 16th at 6.30 p.m. in the Haven Sanctuary to get more information on how to participate. Doing church together is fun. Invite your friends and loved ones to in-person worship service with you. Crossword Church is a great place to worship and fellowship with other believers as we share the good news of Jesus Christ. Services are 9 a.m. at the main campus and 11 a.m. at the March campus. We always do our best to ensure your safety and masks are available if you need them. Can't come in person? No problem. Host a Crossword Watch Party at CrosswordChurch.tv or Crossword Church Facebook. No matter how you watch, tune in and be present. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 7 tells us that God loves a cheerful giver. Our celebration in giving is a joyous time where we worship God with our financial gifts. We do not give because we have to. We give because we love God in advancing His kingdom. Make your gift today by check, money order, cash, or online at crosswordchurch.tv slash giving. The Crossword Church app makes giving very easy, available on Apple and Google, or simply scan the QR code in the chair pocket in front of you. Every gift makes a difference, and we pray blessings upon blessings for your faithfulness and generosity. Those are your announcements for today, Crossword. Now it's time to get your worship on and prepare to receive a dynamic word from the Lord after the praise team sets the table. Hallelujah. Anybody excited to receive a word today? I'm excited to, re to receive a word. Anybody in great expectation today? Great, anybody in great expectation, you know that God is going to fill you up. He's going to fill us up. I don't know about you, but I love to call the name of Jesus. I've noticed um, for the past two weeks, a lot of my song, the songs that we've sang have been just calling on the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And so we're going to continue to do that today. <laughs> we're going to call his name. It's real simple. Just shout out Jesus with us. Hallelujah. Your word. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Oh, Christ. The solid rock I stand. Oh, love, the ground is sinking sand. I dare not trust no other name. Nobody but Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Say it again. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Oh, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, 
but holy trust in Jesus name yeah but holy trust in Jesus name oh Christ when we declare your name mountains are moved mountains are moved when we call your name no name is greater than yours no come on let's lift his name what's his name chief oh every worshiper lift his name all of the sanctuary, let's get before his feet, yeah. Jesus, Jesus, we join in with heaven's angels, we cry out to our very present help you are. Even though mountain tops, we call your name. <laughs> Even in the valley, Lord, we call your name. 
so kind to us, Jesus. I don't know about you, but he truly loves me too much. I find myself, God, how did you, how did I get myself, how did you choose me? How did you choose me? Why, why is the favor on my life the way the favor is on my life? Why did you pick me up when I didn't deserve to be picked up? Why did you choose me to be saved again, God? Why are you choosing me every day? Why are you chasing after me, Jesus? Anybody ever get that feeling when Jesus is like, hey, I'm going to correct you, and I'm going to still love you. I loved you before you loved yourself. This song says you love me too much. Come on, let's lift it up. Say, oh, oh.
worship you. You're a, you're amazing. How many know we serve an amazing God? Whoa, you make my life. You're feel amazing brand new. and you love us. You're amazing. Say you're, you're amazing. Oh, you're amazing God. You make my life feel brand Your promises, new. you speak over us. Oh yeah. All your promises are yeah. some worship. Give God some praise in the place, in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, praise God. Give God some praise. If he's been great in your life, give him some praise. That's not for me. That needs to be for Jesus. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. There's nobody who will do you like Jesus. Our Father and our God, we praise you. We honor you. We thank you for this day that you have made. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your peace, and your mercy. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now that your spirit would dominate in this place. I pray for your divine healing in this place. I pray, Father, for your spirit to dominate in this place. 
Father God, in the name of Jesus, we humble ourselves before you. I ask right now, Father, that you open the ear gate to these, your children. I pray in the name of Jesus that you allow them not to hear from me, but to hear from you. Father God, do what only you can do. It's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Before we go any further, we're, we're okay? We're okay? Okay, amen. Amen. Hello, Crossword March. Turn me down up here in a little bit, in the speakers up here, please. I want to focus on, everybody should have an outline, amen? If you don't have an outline, slap yourself. This outline is a teaching tool so you can study to show yourself approved after you hear the word today. I want to start a new series called We Win. How many of you believe you are winners? How many believe that you can be successful? Amen? How can I win in life? Let's read 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24 together. You know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize, so run to win. Can we read it like we graduated high school this time? Can we do that? Amen? Read it like you, this is God's word. You read God's word with enthusiasm. Again, you know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize, so run to win. Amen? God is worthy to be praised. Praise God for you. Take your seat. Pray God for Pastor Coop. Crossword March. Praise God for your faithfulness. The Super Bowl is here. How many of you going to watch the Super Bowl? Oh, you said, boo, you might not be an American. I'm serious. Everybody loves the Super Bowl. No matter if you're athletic or not, we all love competition. If you're not watching the Super Bowl again, maybe there's something wrong with you. You can learn a lot of spiritual things by watching the Super Bowl. Why are we interested in this game? Because we love competition. We love people who will go the extra mile. We love people who will sacrifice themselves to make sure they get to that next level. If the world will do that, how much more should Christians sacrifice and commit themselves to go to the next level in Jesus? How much more should we commit ourselves to what God has for us as individuals so we can be successful on this side of heaven? We need to understand it's all about Jesus Christ and Him crucified. We love to see people win. We love to see people excel. It's about people going to that next level. But in Christ, you need to go to that next level. God doesn't make any mistakes. You are not a failure. I don't care what you've done in your past. I don't care how many times you have fallen down. I don't care what people have said about you. God has a plan for your life. How many of you believe that? God has a plan for your life. So you got to run your race to win. Whatever lane you are in, you got to make sure you're doing it on God's principles, and God will meet you there, and you will be successful. We're going to look at what Paul talked about in 1 Corinthians 9. Paul talks about the Corinthians games. They were being held in Greece every three years, and he used this as, a, as an analogy to show us how we can run our race on this side of heaven. If you're not concerned about your life, nobody else is going to be concerned about your life. If you're not concerned about what God wants to do through you, nobody else is going to partner with you. If you don't believe in you, nobody else is going to believe in you. So you have to understand that God doesn't make any mistakes. God doesn't do anything haphazardly. Whatever God has for you, he has for you. And God never takes it away. What God has promised to give you, all the promises of God in him are yes and amen. All the promises of God in Jesus are yes and amen. God has already told you yes. He signed it in amen. But you got to be willing to work out your salvation in fear and trembling. So what does it take to be successful? The first thing. It takes desire. Say desire. desire. I must want to win in this life. It takes desire. I must want to make my life count. I must want to make a difference in this world. I must want to compete so I can be the best that my daddy wants me to be. I want to do what my father created me to do, and God created everybody in here to accomplish something. And nobody should want to fail. 
When you look at athletes or you look at people being interviewed during the Super Bowl, when they stick a mic in their mouth, not one person ever says, I came here to lose. Not one person says, I came here because I think we're going to fail. Everyone without fail will say, I came here to be successful. We came here to win this game. If the world will do that, what's wrong with Christian folks? God left you here to do something on this side of heaven so you can be successful in your own right. And when your heart is for God and his purposes and his principles, God will meet you there, but you have to want it. Does anybody want it? You have to want it so that you can be who God wants you to be. It takes passion. It takes attitude. It takes spirit. Not one person said, I believe in failing. I'm tired of seeing Christian folks fall. I'm tired of seeing Christian folks fail. You have that big old brain. You have that big attitude. You know what God has for you. And again, what God has for you, he never takes it away. We, we need to expect to win. Everybody in here is a winner. Look at the person next to you and tell them you're a winner. Tell them again. So you're a winner. They don't believe you. Tell them again. It takes passion. It takes passion. It takes passion. We must want to win. Isn't that the way Christians ought to be? I believe that you have a skill set. I believe that you have a gift. God doesn't do anything haphazardly. God does not make a mistake. You're not a mistake. I don't care what daddy said. I don't care what mama said. You are not a mistake. You have the ability to create wealth. You have the ability to be successful in your own right. But if you don't believe it, nobody else is going to believe it. That's why you got to dress yourself up and fix yourself up. You got to believe in you before anybody else believes in you. I'm tired of Christian folks complaining, murmuring, and complaining and saying, I can't do anything. You can do all things through Christ because he gives you the strength. You can do any and everything with the anointing of God. This church is anointed because you're here. That means that you are anointed. If you don't believe it, nobody else is going to believe it for you. You got to claim what God has for you and your life will change. Say, I want my life to change. But you got to have passion. A life without passion is worthless. If you're not passionate about what you're doing, you're not going to make it. If you're not talking about what you want to accomplish, it's not going to become your reality. you got to speak those things that are not as if they were. That's the Word of God. Speak prosperity when you're broke. Speak peace when there's confusion in your life. Speak the direction you want to go before you know the direction. Say, Lord, I'm claiming my future. Time out for Christians complaining. You have too much knowledge. You have too much experience for you to always be complaining. Just coming to church on Sunday is not good enough. Sunday morning is the hallelujah day. Sunday morning is the shouting good day. But throughout the week, you ought to be praising God. Throughout the week, you ought to be asking your daddy, what do you have for me? What do you want me to do on your behalf because God is for you? Say God is for me. If you Want to make an impression on somebody, you got to have some passion in this world. If you want to be successful in this world, you got to be passionate about it. Think about that. Are you passionate about your job? Are you passionate about your family? Are you passionate about that dream that you have? If you get excited about it, somebody else is going to get excited about it. You have to understand it's about you doing what you must do. So my question is, what do you really want out of life? Think about that. Write it down. Put it on your refrigerator so you can see it over and over again. What do you really want out of life? Paul was passionate. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 24 says it like this. Read it with me. You know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize, so run to win. Y'all going to make me run up on you in a minute. Read it like you mean it. Say it again. Come on. Read it. You know So run to win. Whatever silly little game I'm playing, I'm trying to win. That's my attitude. That's my heart. I don't care what it is. If I'm playing dominoes, threes, please. If I'm playing bid whist, I'm going to send you to Boston. you never been to Boston, I'm sending you to Boston for free. Whatever game I play, I don't care if it's basketball, I'm trying to win. I don't care if I'm running down the street, I'm trying to win. I want to be first. Even as I age, I still believe I can beat a young person. Even if I had to trip them, I'm going to try to win the race. You got to have an attitude. 
to make it in this life. You got to believe that you're the best thing since cotton candy. You got to believe you look good and you feel good when you don't think the world thinks you look good or you don't feel good. You got to talk yourself into believing that my daddy in heaven created me. If God be for me, who can be against me? Stop allowing this world to tell you that you can't make it. You've been around here too long to be walking around miserable. Our people have laid the foundation so you could be successful. Mama did it. Daddy did it. Grandmama did it. Granddaddy did it. The neighbor next door, back in the day when we were about the neighborhood, the neighbors spoke into your life. How dare you say you can't make it? You better believe that you can make it so that you can win your race. Again, 1 Corinthians 9, 24, you know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize, so run to win. In other words, make your life count. I want to succeed in life. That has to be your mindset. Run to win on your job. Run to win in whatever God has deposited in your spirit. If God be for you, who can be against you? If God has whispered to you way back then, and here's what people need to understand. That dream God gave you years ago, God never takes it away. But you can allow it to be dormant because you're waiting for the money to come in. Because you went through some challenges in life. God spoke to your life a long time ago. He spoke what you were supposed to accomplish. But because of life circumstances and issues and challenges, you giving up on it, I'm telling you right now that God will redeem the time. Come on, Crossword March. He will redeem the time so your latter days will be better than your past if you just get on fire for the Lord and start running that race that you know he called you to run. It's that serious. If God be for me, who can legally be against me? I run to win. Again, I'm trying to, to get my prize. I'm not going to a race just to get a participation trophy. You keep that. I wanted to say first place. I might settle for second place, but then I'm going to try to steal the first place trophy because I want to be number one. That's just me. Pray for me. I believe in winning in any and everything, and you have to believe that too. Christian folks. We use all these colloquial terms, God before me, nobody can be against me. Believe that. Ask your daddy to give you what you need to be successful on this side of heaven. Ask him to give you a dream that can be manifested on this side of heaven. Ask him to send people to partner with you that will help you get to your divine destiny. Maybe you are around the wrong group of people. They're miserable and they want you to be miserable. Maybe you need a new group of folks you can run with. They don't want you to leave them because misery loves company, so they'll tell you nobody's going to love you. They'll tell you that you're not smart enough. They'll tell you that you can't make it in this world. It's a lie. You need somebody that's going to look at you and say, you know what? You can do it. Mama did it. You can do it. Daddy did it. You can do it. Grandfather did it. You can do it. Grandmama did it. You can do it, but you have to have some passion. God did not create you to retire and relax. Relax for what? Turn it down for what? Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Excuse me. Wrong place. Wrong place. Turn it down for what? You better be amped up for the Lord. I just want to retire and relax. No, 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 no. You can retire in heaven. The Bible says we're going to walk around heaven all day long. You get to relax in heaven. Right now, you're trying to make sure that your children do better than you. You're trying to make sure that the neighborhood is going to progress. When your heart is for whomsoever, for other people, that's when God is going to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that your barns will not be able to contain. It's not about you. It's about the kingdom. Say it's about the kingdom. People need to understand that we need to move beyond our past. The number one reason many people don't push forward because of your past. You made mistakes in the past, welcome to the human race. You falling down, welcome to the human race. Don't you let your past mistakes define who you are today. We all look good as we age. We can fix it up. We can clean it up. We can present a different package. But we all have challenges. We all have issues. And sometimes because of the way they treated you on the playground, you still have low self-esteem. Sometimes because of the way they neglected you, they didn't let you come into the in crowd and you feel that nobody respects you. 
Don't you know that you have the ability to create great things when you are sold out to the cause of Christ? Does anybody want to create some great things in this world? Come on now. We need our people to progress, and you are a part of our people. That's why you need to say, Lord, I want to be successful. Matter of fact, say that aloud right now. Lord, I want to be successful. Say it again. Look at a person next to you and tell them, Lord, I want to be successful. Tell it. Say it back. Say, Lord, I want to be successful. Success does not mean a whole lot of money. You could be successful when you're broke. You could be successful when you don't feel good. You can be successful when it's a good hair day or a hat day. You can be successful no matter what you go through. You can be successful if you just try God, if you just trust God. Psalm 35 verse 27 says it like this. Read it with me. The Lord is pleased with the success of his servants. Those of you who are parents, you want your children to be more successful than you were. You want your children to go to higher heights. Every generation ought to do better than the previous generation. That's why you speak life into your children. You want to encourage them to go further than you were able to go. That's why we stand in the footsteps of our ancestors. They laid the foundation. How dare you not pick up the torch and run with it? How dare you say you cannot go back to school? You can go to school online. You don't even have to leave your bedroom and get a degree. When our ancestors had to march for the right to be integrated into school, the right to get books and things of that nature, we are without excuse. Google is your friend. If you don't know something, you can Google it right there and say, oh, I always thought. Did you know? We are without excuse. We have so much information at our fingertips Time for the church folks to take back what the enemy has stolen from us. It's time for church folks to see what the world is doing and say, you know what? If the world who denies Jesus can be successful, surely God's children can be successful. That's why you need to push forward and run the race God has given you. So my question to you is what do you really want out of life? It's very personal. What do you want out of life? You got to figure that out. Maybe you're running in too many different directions. What do you want out of life? And sometimes you have to start low to find your destiny. Sometimes you just have to pick up something and walk with it and say, Lord, order my steps. Order my steps through your word, dear Lord. I'm going to get up off the couch. I'm going to move away from the TV. I'm not sure exactly where you want me to go, but I know I can't stay the way I am. So, Lord, I'm trusting you. Order my steps through your word, dear Lord. Order my steps through your word. So, are you reading God's word? Are you perusing God's word? Order my steps, Lord. That's why Paul says you need to have direction. Say direction. I must focus on a goal. You cannot just run around in circles. You must have a goal in life. 1 Corinthians 9.26 says, read it with me. I run straight to the goal with purpose in every step. I fight to win. I'm not just shadow boxing or playing around. Paul says I have a direction. I'm not just aimlessly floating through life. I'm not allowing circumstances, situations, or people to have me do what they want me to do. I have a direction. My father has a plan for me, so I'm going to follow his plan for my life. I run straight to the goal. That means that you better be focused. You better be able to get over that hurdle. I have a goal. Will it be easy? No. What God has for you, he never takes it away. God has great things for you, but you got to push to the mark of the high calling. You got to push forward to the goal. This is what Paul is talking about. It takes direction. Some of you are going in too many different directions. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. But is it God's purpose for your life? I've been good at a number of things, but it wasn't until I accepted God's call on my life that I really started to live. You have a calling on your life. And it does not always mean in the church God has given you a gift that will bless the world. 
So you give God the glory, you get his knowledge, you use his word to go into the world so you can be successful and promote God's kingdom. Satan's children don't have a problem promoting his stuff. The filth and the negativity we see in the world today, that's Satan's children taken away from God's children. They don't mind telling you what they smoke, what they drink, who they slept with. They don't mind telling you their filth and promoting it as if it's something good. But Christians, we don't want to offend anybody. No, you, you can't talk about Jesus in school. You can't talk about Jesus on your job. Separation of church and state. Well, they talk about whatever the hell they want to talk about. How about telling them that there is a heaven and there is a hell? So I'm going to tell you about Jesus because he changed my life and he'll change yours. Time out for Satan's children dominating the airways. You have too much going on. You have too much wisdom for God not to use you. And God will use whomsoever. God will make your latter days better than your past if you just get on board for him. Am I talking to anybody right now? You know the reason I have 39 here on my jersey? You got to see that part too. Don't hate. Don't hate. The reason why I got 39 on my jersey because I was 39 when God called me to start the church. I had been successful in a number of things, but my life did not begin until I accepted God's plan. And some people will say 39 is too old to start a church. A lot of people come straight out of college and start in their 20s. 39. And God says, if you finally listen to me, if you finally do what I told you to do a long time ago, I will redeem the time so your latter day sites will be better than what you've done in the past. Doesn't mean I was evil in the past, but I finally got on board for the Lord at 39. You better hear what I'm saying. It's never too late to get busy for the Lord. Say, I need to get busy for the Lord. Some of y'all messed that up already. I need to get busy for the Lord. Say it again. I need to get busy for the Lord. I'm not just going through the motions. I'm not just playing around. I'm not just swinging in the air. I have a destination. Unfortunately, too many people are playing church. Christians are playing with God. People who never really get serious with God. They never really get serious about what God has for them. They never get serious about their family. They never get serious about what God has placed down in their spirit a long time ago. They never get serious about serving the purposes of the Lord. In many churches, it's the same folks serving the purposes of the Lord. This church didn't open itself up this morning. You had people who came early to make sure it was ready for you. Have you ever said, let me come early so I can set up a chair, so I can make sure the lights are on, so I can make sure the heat or the air is on? Have you ever shown up early? And ask, how can I help the foundation of the church? Have you ever shown up early and say, you know what, what can I do to get more people to come in? Have you ever shown up early and say, you know what, I have an idea. It works on my job. Can we see if this will work in the church to promote God's purpose? Have you ever come early to say, you know what, I want to assist God's program so that others who come into the church can know the Jesus that I know? Have you ever said, I'm going to serve the Lord. People never get really serious about serving God, never get really serious about giving. Everybody wants God to bless them, but are you blessing God? Never get serious about your children understanding the Word of God. Never get serious about, about sharing your faith. Does anybody know that you are a Christian? Does anybody know that you are a Christian? You can go back to the neighborhood with your anointed self and let the fellows know that God delivered me. You can go back around those folks, or if you really don't like them, them people, and let them know that God changed your life. One thing that when God got a hold of me, I still went around the fellas. They were still smoking, drinking, Cavassier, Cognac, Chevis Regal. I'm telling them a little bit too much now. That's grown folk stuff. But I went back. When God got a hold of me, I went back around the fellas, and the fellas started supporting me. When people came into the group and they tried to pass me the joint or try to pass me a bottle, the fellows would step in and say, no, 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 he don't smoke that. He doesn't drink. Then they'd say, but he's still cool. 
You can go back. Once you have been delivered from that stuff, you can go back. And some of those fellas, I ended up doing their funeral. Good friend of mine, Kevin, died in a motorcycle accident, worked for MTA, great friend of mine. I ended up doing his funeral at Crossword because God shook me way back then, and I didn't stop going around them because God had changed my life. How about going back to where God delivered you from and get somebody else delivered? How about using your testimony to tell other people, I know what they're saying about you, but they said the same thing about me. I know they're whispering about you, but they whispered about me. But God showed up in the nick of time. But God changed my life. That will preach in any circle. That will get people saved when you're just a genuine article, but you need some direction. Say, I need some direction. Proverbs 17, 24 says, read it with me. An intelligent man aims at wise actions, but a fool starts off in many directions. An intelligent man or an intelligent woman will seek the voice of the Lord and head in the right direction. Order my steps, dear Lord. Order my steps with your word. Through your word, dear Lord, a wise woman, a wise man will say, Lord, speak to my heart. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Sometimes you just need to spend time alone in your bedroom, your bathroom, and just talk to the Lord. Stay there until God whispers to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I need to feel you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for family. I'm praying for friends. I'm praying for my job. I'm praying for my finances. In the name of Jesus, Father, I don't know why this hurts so bad, but I know that you sit on the throne. I know you sit high, but you look low. Father, in the name of Jesus, I need your wisdom right now. I need to be delivered right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to pray until something happens. I'm going to pray until you change my life, but you have to understand you need to be intelligent about it and pray the word. So the second question I have for you, if you want to win in life, what do I really want most? The second question, what is the focus of my life? What do I really want most, number one? Secondly, what's the focus of your life? What are you really dreaming about? I don't mean to hurt your feelings, but you're getting older. I know you don't think you're looking older, but you're getting older. I saw you when I walked in. You're getting older. I'm just funny. I'm getting older. We're all getting older. You have no idea when you're going to transition. And it's a sad thing for you to transition and open your eyes up in heaven. Praise God, you're in heaven. But God will say, you know what? You didn't do what I asked you to do. I had all these gifts for you. I had all these plans for you. But because of fear. Because of your past mistakes, because of what the hood said, because of what the family said, because of what racism said, you did not step out of faith and try. So welcome to the heavenly abode, but I had all this for you in the earthly realm. The only way you progress is to step out in faith and say, Lord, I don't know where I'm going, but I know you have something great in store for me. So you need to start doing it now. I need for you to win. So what is the focus of my life? You can't do everything. Focus in on what God has really put in your heart. Focus on what God has commissioned you to do. And when you center yourself there, God will open up doors and connect you to people who are like-minded. Am I making sense right now? You need to do this. And God will redeem the time. He will do it when you just trust him. You need to be focused. Say, I need to focus. Let me go deeper on focusing. Focusing means that that you are looking away from the things that caused you harm in the past. Doesn't mean you forget, but you know there's danger there, so you're not going to go there. You know how to focus. When you drive on the freeway and you ride in the fast lane, you know they got those, those white center blocks in the fast lane. When you're next to those blocks, what do you do? You keep looking right down here, right down the center. Because you know if you look at those white center blocks, the car is going to naturally just drift over there. And then you catch yourself and you try to get back in the center. Why? Because whatever you focus on, you're going to be drawn to it. You look at that white center block long enough, you're going to hit it. That's why you keep looking down the center of the lane. Look down the center of the lane. I got to stay focused. Even though you know it's there, you don't focus on it. 
Whatever you focus on, you're going to run into. For good or for bad, whatever you focus on, you're going to crash and burn. You're going to mess up because you're focusing on the wrong doggone thing. What are you looking at? What gets your attention? God says, focus on me. You're in the fast lane of life, but what are you looking at? You're about to crash and burn. And you don't know how long God is going to give you. God is not a respecter of person, but understand this. You don't know how much rope he's going to give you. And sometimes we look at evil people in the world and we say, well, well God hasn't chastised them. Surely I have more time. You don't know what God preordained you to accomplish. And because God gave you a special skill set, because God gave you that big old brain, God is going to hold you on a shorter rope. He's going to give knucklehead and that fool more opportunity to finally realize that he is God. But you know he's God. You're too doggone smart not to do what he has called you to do. So God's going to get to a point that he said, enough. I've given you second chance, third chance, fourth chance, and you're still not telling people about Jesus. You're still not doing what I call you to do. You're still afraid to step out in faith. God's going to say, enough. You may as well come home and spend eternity with me. So what are you looking at? What are you focusing on? Are you focusing on the past mistakes you have made? We've all made them. Are you focusing on the future that God has for you? What are you focusing on? You got to figure that out if you want your life to change. You got to focus on where you want to go, not where you've been. You got to focus on what you want to have, not what you don't have. You got to focus on those who love you, not those who have left you. You got to focus on your seed and make sure your children and your grandchildren are able to do better than you were able to do. What are you focusing on? You got too much worry in you for all the drama in your life. What are you focusing on? Paul says if you really want your life to count, you have to make sure that you're heading toward the success that God has for you. But the third thing it takes, it takes discipline. It takes what? Discipline. This one is huge. You got to discipline yourself. Or back in the day, we say you got to check yourself before you rickety wreck yourself. Rickety wreck yourself. That's different than wrecking yourself. When you rickety wreck, you really messed up. It takes discipline. 1 Corinthians 9.25 says, read it with me. All those who compete in the games use self-control so they can win. Read it again. Let me hear you. In other words, he said they learn how to discipline themselves. They learn how to work out. They learn what they need to do to be successful. In high school, Greg Foster, who came in second to Ronaldo Nehemiah of the high hurdles, Greg Foster went to my high school. He lived three blocks away from my home. Greg Foster was always on the track, always running hurdles. Went to the Olympics, came in second. He was always close, but he was focused. Wasn't smoking, wasn't drinking, wasn't kicking it on the block. He was focused because God had a plan for his life. Christian folks, Christian man, Christian woman, you need to discipline yourself to make sure you are able to make it. 1 Corinthians 9.25, he says, all those who compete in the games use self-control so they can what? So they can win. Self-control, in other words, you, you discipline your life. You discipline yourself. The same verse in the Living Bible says, to win, you must deny yourself. Say deny yourself. To win, you must deny yourself many things that will keep you from doing your best. Discipline and self-denial. There's some things you just need to walk away from. There's some people you just need to walk away from. You need to deny yourself if you're truly going to be used by God. Maybe that means that you need to study a little bit more. So you got to deny yourself from hanging out on that particular day. Maybe it it means that you need to turn off the TV every now and again so you can read your word more or so you can get that report done, turn off all the noise around you and spend quality, quiet time with God. Deny yourself. 
That may mean you can't smoke this or drink that. Deny yourself. That may mean you need to expand your circle of friends. Deny yourself. Paul said, I denied myself. Some things that I had a right to do, some things that I wanted to do, I denied myself because it was God's plan for my life, not what I want to do. Sometimes you need to deny yourself and say, Lord, use me. Lord, I'm tired of being me. I'm tired of the same old drama in my life. Lord, redeem the time. Make my latter days better than my past. Lord, I'm going to deny myself so I can be in the center of your will. To win, you must deny yourself many things that will keep you from doing your best. Discipline and self-denial. They're mandatory. Some things you just need to let go. Say, I need to let it go. No matter how much fun you think it's going to bring to you, no matter how good you think it's going to make you feel, sometimes you got to deny those things, church. We are too gifted as a people for you not to be successful. It's about you stepping into the land God has for you. It takes discipline to be successful. It takes discipline to win in life, period. Amen? We need to be disciplined. Listen to what this says. The difference between successful people and unsuccessful people, successful people are willing to do the things and develop habits that unsuccessful people aren't willing to do. Unsuccessful people are not willing to pay the price. Unsuccessful people are not willing to sacrifice so they can go up the food chain. They're not willing to sacrifice. They don't want to pay the cost to be used by God. You got to pay the cost to be the boss. Come on, James Brown. Come on, work with me. Pay the cost to be the boss. You want to have that business? You want to have success? You got to pay the cost to be the boss. That means sometimes you just have to stop doing what the world is telling you to do. That means that you got to pause sometimes and say, you know what? I need to study a little bit harder. No, I can't go hang out. I can't drink that. I can't smoke that. No, I need some quality time with me and the Lord. If you start there, your life will change. Turn off the TV, turn off the radio, and just stay in the house in silence. And watch how God will speak to you. Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. In silence. No children, no TV, no iPad, no phone. Silence. At first, you're going to feel kind of out of source because we're so used to noise. Even when we're not watching TV, we got the TV on. There's always noise going on, but shut everything down and sit there in silence. That's when God whispers to you. That's when God gives you ideas. That's when God comforts you. You feel the Spirit hug you. That's when you start crying because God will bring to your remembrance how he was there in the past, how he pulled you out of the muck in the miry clay last time, and you'll start crying because you'll say, I forgot about that, Lord. Lord, that was you. It wasn't luck. It wasn't chance. It wasn't that I got a break. It was you, Lord. You were there. Father, I apologize. I forgot. If you helped me back then, surely you will help me right now. If you helped me back then, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying that you will meet me where I am right now. But that only happens in the silence. You got too much going on in that brain of yours. Sit alone by yourself and say, Lord, I'm not going to move until you speak to me. Lord, I'm going to stay right here. I know that you are God. I'm calling on you right now. I need your comforting power right now. I'm not moving until you speak to me, Lord. Speak to my heart, Lord. Speak to my heart, Lord. And you'll feel the Spirit drop. There's nothing more precious than that. You can be in mid-sentence or mid-thought and the Spirit will drop. And you'll just... You won't even be able to speak. We're not talking about a facade. I'm talking about when the anointing of God just falls on you. Our bodies are too light to contain the power of God. So when the Spirit really drops on you, all you can do is say, you start shaking your head, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's like a, a warm hug. 
And it's just this pulsating that God is all over you, and you know it's him because it's so precious. And he's whispering to you and telling you that you can make it, telling you that he has not forgotten you, telling you that he will not forsake you, telling you that he will never leave you, telling you that you are more than a conqueror, that you are more than an overcomer, telling you that you and God is a majority, that all you need is Jesus, all you need is the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. He'll tell you that you are my child, and I will never I'm going to leave you out there by yourself. God is saying to you right now that you better get on fire for the things of God. Time out for Satan's children winning this war, winning this race. Time out for Christian folks being afraid to speak truth to power. His name is Jesus. There's power in the name. What's his name? Jesus is his name. There's power in his name. The demons tremble when you call on the name of Jesus. The demons fall away from you and your household when you declare the blood of Christ. For I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood that Jesus shed for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood he shed for me. He died for you. Make it personal. He died for you. How dare you shortchange him by not giving him your whole life? Not just a Sunday morning, you. Not just I want something, you. Not just I feel good today, you. He died so that he can have all of you. So that he can have every waking moment with you. Jesus is his name. You sure if you want to sound so spiritual. Jesus is his name. How dare we short circuit who he is. Successful people will go the extra mile. Successful Christians will go deeper in their faith. But it takes discipline. The problem is we want beautiful bodies without discipline, without working out. We want big houses without working for it. We want nice cars without maintaining them. You got a nice car and the oil has been changed in six months. We want stuff, but we don't know how to maintain it. We want God to give us all this stuff. God will give you what you have the capacity to take care of. So make sure you're doing it under God's provision and God will meet you there. It's that simple. You still don't believe me? Proverbs 13, 4 says, read it with me. Lazy people want much but get little while the discipline are prospering. The mark of a successful person is discipline. It's that simple. Discipline yourself. Say, Lord, I'm going to finally do what you have called me to do. In other words, are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to have people talk about you? You believe in that Jesus stuff? Are you willing to have friends walk away from you because you say, you know, I can't do that anymore? Are you willing to hang up the phone when you get the phone call at the midnight saying, hello, can I swing by? Uh, the silence throughout the land. Are you able to say, no, that's not me anymore? Are you able to do what you can do? Say, no, 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 you're not going to treat me like a second-class citizen some of you are so lonely that you let any old body just run up on you. Say, no, I'm a child of God. God has somebody special for me. I'm not going to succumb to that mess that you're talking about. I know who my daddy is. I know what he has for me. Uh-uh-uh. You're not going to play me like that. Even though everybody plays a fool sometimes, say, cancel that mess. I'm going to be on fire for the Lord. Lazy people, lazy Christians, forget about people, the world's going to be the world. Lazy Christians want much, but they get little while the disciplined folks are prospering. Those who are disciplined for Satan's stuff, they're prospering because they're following their idol, Satan. How about following the one true God who's going to hold Satan accountable also and say, you know what? The world cannot stop me from being successful because I'm following he who has the cattle on a thousand hills, and he's going to bless me and my seed. So are you willing to pay the cost? Are you willing to pay the cost to be the boss? 
I pay the cost to be the boss. James Brown, come on again, James Brown. I pay the cost to be the boss. Matter of fact, go home and listen to that bass line. That bass line had you just tap your foot. I pay the cost to be the boss. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, okay. I pay the cost to be used by Jesus. Are you willing to pay the price? And finally, it takes determination. It takes what? I must never give up. I must never give in. On good days, on bad days, when I don't feel like it days, I must never throw in the towel. When I think that I am failing, I must never throw in the towel. I keep holding on to his unchanging hand. I keep praying and asking him for direction. I stay in his face. And that's not just at night. You can pray with your eyes wide open. You can pray all throughout the day without opening your mouth. You mentally ascend to the throne of grace. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just want to say thank you. I have a job. Thank you. I have a house. Thank you. I have family. Thank you. You don't have to open your mouth. You don't have to wait till the evening to get on your knees next to your bed. You can mentally praise God all throughout the day. That's true love. If you only call your spouse when you want something, that's not true love. You only reach out to your children when you want something, that's not true love. When you reach out to family, you reach out to them just because you were thinking about them. How about reaching out to God just because you had a thought? Say, Father, I don't want anything. I just want to praise your holy name. It takes determination. I must never give up. 1 Corinthians 9, 27, read it with me. I treat my body hard so that I myself will not be disqualified. In other words, he's saying, I do whatever it takes. I hold myself accountable. I treat my body hard. I'm my own worst critic. That's what he's talking about. I criticize myself. Nobody else has to criticize me. I know where I fall short. I'm challenging myself to get it right. I'm looking in the mirror and saying, whoa, it's me. Not society, not the color of my skin, not racism, not sexism or any other ism. It's me. I did this thing. I look at myself. He's saying, I treat my body hard. I treat my mind hard. I treat my circumstances for what it is. And I say, Lord, make this better. Lord, I'm trusting you. I'm going to keep on keeping on. What does it take to keep on keeping on? I'm going to keep on moving. I'm not going to stop in the middle of my race. I'm going to keep on moving even though my body is aching. And when you're uh, ailing physically, the doctor will tell you you got to move every now and again. You can't just sit on the couch. Even if you just walk around the living room with a cane, you need movement to be successful. You need movement to be healed. And that's why you exercise your mind, not just watching TV. How about doing some crossword puzzles? You got that electronic device. How about using it for crossword puzzles? Because that will strengthen your mind. How about reading an educational article that will strengthen your mind? Out of the heart flows the issues of life, but uh, the mind is a terrible thing to waste. So you have to have determination. I'm going to make it. That's determination. Great people are just ordinary people with extraordinary determination. They don't know how to quit, and you should not quit. I'm going to close with this. Hebrews 12, verse 1 through 3. Matter of fact, read it with me. Let us run the race that is before us and never give up. We should remove from our lives anything that will get in the way and the sin that holds us back. Let us look only to Jesus. Think about his example. He held on while wicked people were doing evil things to him. So don't get tired and stop trying. Notice it says that in order to finish your race, you got to let go of some things. You got to keep moving forward. In order to finish your race, you got to make sure that you're doing what God has called you to do. First, he says, you need to let go of anything that's stopping you from being more spiritual. Anybody, anything. Because we're more spiritual than we are physical. It may be somebody in your household, maybe people on the job. Again, they talk about what they did on the weekend, the filth they did, but you can't talk about Jesus on your job. Damn that. I'm talking about Jesus. Yeah, I said it. 
You're telling me all the filth you did, but if I talk about Jesus, I'm going to get written up and talk about Jesus. There's something wrong with me. But you're telling me everything you smoked and everybody you sexed up and all the profanity you used, I need to listen to that. But I can't tell you that I was at church, that I love me some Jesus, and he'll change your life too. You're going to write me up because I'm going to tell you the truth of the gospel, but you're going to let this fool come in week after week talking about all the mess that he did throughout the week. But I can't tell you that I was in church on Sunday praying for this fool that one day he he will understand that Jesus will change his life. I'm not going to keep my mouth shut and allow Satan's children to dominate. How dare us as Christians be afraid to speak truth to power? Not beating people over the head, but just being real, being natural. Say, so Jesus changed my life. I used to do what you do. I used to do that. But God took that away from me. Being natural, why don't you come to church with me? We have, we have some things going on. Being natural. Young man, I, I used to be where you are. But God got a hold of me. And if you let him, he'll get a hold of you. That's why the old school church, we said the church is just a hospital full of sick people. Everybody's sick. You're sick, I'm sick, everybody's sick, sick. We all have issues. That's why we don't judge. That's why we want to love on people so they too can know the Jesus that we know. So what's holding you back? What's stopping you from becoming who God created you to be? Your low self-esteem, your lack of finances, that crazy thought that you have, what's holding you back? You have to take control of your life. You're the boss of you. You have to take control of your life. You're the boss of you. I shared my testimony in the past that when, when God got a hold of me, I still went around the fellows. I just stopped smoking and drinking what they were doing. I wasn't afraid to go back around them. And they started protecting me. If somebody new came into the circle, they, they would say, no, 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 he doesn't smoke that. He doesn't drink, but he's still cool. You don't have to run away from your past. But when God delivers you, maybe your task is to make sure your family is saved. It's a doggone shame for you to be saved and the one you're sleeping with is not. It's a doggone shame that you're saved and your children are not. Live the example in front of them. Pray over them so God can shake them like he shook you. And this world will be a better place. So what do you need to change? Maybe it's your job. Maybe God has something more for you to do. What do you need to change? What do you need to take control of? What do you need to say, Lord, I'm giving this over to you. You need to let some stuff go. But there's some things you need to hold on to. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Hold on to the faith that's gotten you this far. Hold on to the promises of God. All the promises in Jesus are yes and amen. That's what the Word says. All the promises in Jesus, yes and amen. God has already said God cannot deny himself. What God has promised you, he never takes it away. God says yes and amen. It's already done. Yes, I'm going to bless you. Amen. It's already done. Yes, I'm going to heal you. Amen. It's already done. But you got to walk in the yes and the amen and stop allowing that crazy brain of yours to talk you out of a blessing. 2 Timothy 4, 7, Paul said, I finished the race and I had kept the faith. I finished the race, I kept the faith. How about focusing on your walk and finishing the task that God has for you? Life is tough, but Psalm 60 verse 12 says, we can win with what? With God's help. We can win, you can win with God's help. Lord, order my steps. Give me the strength. Lord, give me a new outlook on life. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I need you right now. I'm feeling some kind of way right now. I helped them and they talked about me. Lord, I'm feeling some kind of way right now. Father, I really need you. Father, I don't understand why I have to go through this. I've been faithful. 
I don't get it, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I'm, I'm frustrated. I read your word. I, I'm giving, Father. I don't know why this is happening to my family, so I need some direction, Father. I'm going to keep praying until a change comes over me, Father. I'm never going to deny you. I'm never going to doubt you. I know that you're real. I can feel you way down in my soul. I would never turn my back on you. But, Father, I need some answers right now. That's how you talk to your daddy. That's how you win your race. That's how you make it to the finish line. By being faithful in season or out of season. By trusting in the Lord with all of your heart. How could I win in life? Put it next to your translation. That's why we pass out the blue outlines. Put it next to your Bible and read it for yourself. Make it your own. Matter of fact, I told you this before, cut off the top part and say, you know what? I was thinking, I don't need the credit, cut my name out of there and say, you know what? I was thinking, I want to share this with you. We're family. You have too much spiritual knowledge for you not to be able to speak into someone's life and let them know that we win, that we win, that we win. Amen? Praise God for you. Give it up for Pastor Coop doing a great job here. Amen. Amen. But we need for you to invite people. That's your task. Invite people. I want you to keep Jackie Miller, Jackie Proctor Miller, lifted up in prayer. Her funeralized her brother yesterday. Many, do you know Jackie? Many of you don't know Jackie. The screen. That's done with my sermon titles and the colors. Jackie does that every week. She makes it. I just send her my outline. She comes up with the design every week. From from Florida. Let me say it again. She does it every week from Florida. Used to live here, moved to Florida, and said, no, I'm still going to serve the Lord in Florida. She does it every week from Florida, and you're right here in the hood and too busy to work for the Lord. You walked right into that one. So keep her lifted up in prayer. Her brother Bill, who used to own the Jazz Cafe, he started that back in, I want to say, 2000. Yeah, that's right. Jazz is still the po- on point. Don't, don't mess with me right now. Jazz Cafe, I prayed over it when he opened it. He, he got many people into the business, musicians and whatnot. He went home to be with the Lord. We did his funeral yesterday. So keep her lifted up in prayer. Amen. Super Bowl Sunday, I want you to enjoy time with family and friends. Have a good time, relaxing. But let's stay on fire for the Lord. Tithes and offerings. We are supported with tithes and offerings. Yeah, hand prayer goes there. March campus. Here's my challenge for you. I want you to start inviting people to this campus. Bring somebody with you. If they live in your house, they have to come or they can sit outside until you get back. How dare they burn your heat in your air while you're here praying for them. Put them out. Say, either come to church with me or sit out on the corner on the curb until I get back. Start inviting family members and friends to this campus as we continue to expand. Amen? Give it up for our band. Fantastic. Fantastic. I'm trying to figure out which ones I'm going to steal, Pastor Coop. I'm not going to tell you about it, but I'm snatching a couple of them in Jesus' name. Pray for me in Jesus' name. Our band is outstanding. Wouldn't you agree? Amen. Come on. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. I share this, and I've shared this before. All of them are successful in the world. Don't miss this. They play with some bad groups. They are on call for professional musicians, professional groups. They have that talent, but they show up every Sunday to use their gift for the Lord first. Don't miss the little stuff that's right in front of you. They tour with some of the artists. I can't pronounce their names, but they are that connected. God will do the same for you when you give your whole life over to him. So giving, tithes and offerings right here in this place, get used to giving. Amen? Love and appreciate you. Pastor Scoop, anything else? 
Hey, Cross Murray, can you hear me? Hey, come on, let's give Bishop some hand praise real quick before he pays, prays us out. Hey, quick announcement. Um, uh, on the 25th of February, hey, we're going to be painting the high school room. I'm going to say it again. On the 25th of February, we're going to be painting the high school room. Amen? It's green in there. I don't know who painted it that color, Bishop. I don't know. But hey, hey, we would love to see you guys out um, and just come volunteer. The more we get, we can have three people on one wall, right, at one time. Boom, we out of there in 30 minutes. Just walking out. So, so look, come on out. The plan is Friday the 24th at 4 p.m. I'll be here with a couple of the brothers. We're going to mask everything off, tape everything off, get the floor. So that's 6 p.m. I mean, excuse me, 6 a.m. Yeah, don't come at 6 p.m., huh? <laughs> 6 a.m. on Saturday, we prime it. We prime it. We're going to give it a couple of, maybe an hour or two to go ahead and uh, uh, dry while we get some pizza at, at 8 a.m. Yeah. And, and then at 8 a.m., uh, 9 p.m., uh, 9 a.m., we, we're going to go ahead and paint it over, okay? So please, put that in your calendar. Uh, high school, please come on out. It's your room. It's your room, all right? So uh, February 25th. We'll be painting it February 24th at 4 p.m. We'll prep and prime everything. Amen? All right. Thank you, Bishop. Amen. Love you, sir. Praise God. Give another hand praise for Pastor Coop. Why don't you stand? 6 a.m. I'll be praying for you. 6 a.m. Lord Jesus, keep them at 6 a.m. <laughs> Have fun. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we praise you. We thank you for the freedom to have laughter and levity in your house. Father, we just thank you for the anointing that's in this place. We uplift this weekend. We know that you are the ultimate Super Bowl. So, Father, give us a word to share with those we come in contact with. I thank you for the leadership here. I thank you for those who are working behind the scenes. I thank you for the membership here. Continue to allow us to flourish and grow. Now, Father, bless us as we depart from this place, but never for your loving kindness. Keep us in your keeping care until we meet again. It's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. And the church of God said, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Love and appreciate you.